and welcome to Mary Makes. I'm Mary and today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the Wada Wada from the Boy and the Heron. These guys are so cute, I already made like four of them. If you've seen the Boy and the Heron, then you know that these Wada Wada are the little bubble spirits that are just waiting to be born and as long as they're not eaten by pelicans, they're, they'll be fine, they'll be fine. But they're just so cute and like, they like come in hordes, you know, there's just like a huge amount of them. I think that's what makes them so cute, is the quantity. The Wada Wada is a beginner friendly crochet tutorial, so I'll take you step by step through how to make the body, how to crochet the arms, the feet, sew them on, how to put the eyes on, how to embroider the facial expressions on, and I'll take you slowly through it all. Use the chapters in this video to skip forward or um, repeat a part as you need. Remember, you can also speed up or slow down this tutorial. Really quick plug before we get into it. As always, crocheting is my passion and I love sharing that with all of you. So this tutorial is free and available on YouTube. I would just like to advertise the PDF of this pattern. Um, this pattern is six pages. It includes um, pictures and step-by-step -step examples of what to do. Um, it also, as a little bonus, includes a modified version of the body to create the inflated Wada Wada. So, you know, when they're like, bubbling up and floating upwards so i hope you'll support me and purchase a copy of the pdf pattern for this tutorial uh the link is in the description um alternatively you could also buy me a coffee now let's dive into the materials that you'll need to make your very own wada wada what you're going to need is first white yarn Today I'm using Premier Basics a uh, size 4 medium worsted weight yarn in white. This is my favorite brand of worsted weight yarn. Um, compared to other worsted weight kind of budget yarns, I just think um, this one has a much nice, nicer like volume, fullness, and thickness to it that some other yarns don't necessarily have. So I'd highly recommend Premier Basics. If you're interested in purchasing some of this yarn, use my referral code in the description for 10% off your first order from Premier Yarns. Next, you're going to need a crochet hook. I'm using a size four millimeter crochet hook. Um, again, if you are using a thinner yarn, you may want to use a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook or even a three and a half millimeter crochet hook. You're also going to need a yarn needle for sewing everything in, a pair of scissors, um, and then you're going to need a pair of eight millimeter safety eyes. Um, here's what the eyes look like and here's what the backs look like. I like to take um, extra precautions and secure my safety eyes by using a lighter to melt the back post so that they'll like never come out. I'll show you how to do that as well, but that is optional, so a lighter. You'll also need either pink or black embroidery thread or yarn to uh, make the face. Um, so I have some black embroidery thread here and I actually have some Red Heart Super Saver in light raspberry for the pink mouth. Of course, you can use whatever pink you'd like for the mouth. Um, you'll also need stuffing. You don't need a ton of stuffing. Um, I'd say less than like 100 grams. Oh, and back to the white yarn, you're only going to need about 30 to 35 grams. We'll say 35 grams to be safe. Um, so this makes this pattern a great stash buster for your leftover yarn. Um, all of these uh, tools um, can be bought online or in your local craft store. Um, if you're interested, the link to my Amazon storefront is in the description where you, if you purchase one of these items, I do earn a small commission. All right, I think that's everything. Let's get started. First, we're going to crochet the body. Taking your white yarn, I'm going to show you very slowly how to create the magic ring. If you already know how to create the magic ring, go ahead and skip ahead to row two and we'll continue crocheting this together. But to make the magic ring the way I do it, take the dead end of your yarn in your left hand, take the live end and wrap it around so that your yarn is above that dead end, just like that. You should have an X above, uh, an X like this, where this port part of your X is the live yarn from your ball of yarn and it is over the dead end. Then take your crochet hook, insert it into that hole, grab your live yarn, 
And then what you're gonna do is rotate your hook so that it's facing the ceiling like that. Now, you're going to yarn over with your live yarn like that and then pull this through. This makes the adjustable slip ring, um, adjustable slip knot, AKA the magic ring. And uh, you can pull this end to adjust it. We're going to be making our first row of stitches in the magic ring. So for round number one, now that you've made your magic ring, go ahead and insert your crochet hook into the hole, grab your live yarn, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. That's one single crochet. We're gonna make six single crochet. So do it again, insert your hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And one more time, insert your hook into the circle, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. That's three single crochet in the magic ring. Here's four, five, and six. Once you have six single crochet in the magic ring, take your end and pull it tight. And there's like, when you pull it tight, you'll feel, you'll feel a little yarn like slip almost. That's when you know you've tightened it as much as you can. And now your, um, your hole in the center is completely gone and we'll continue crocheting. Going on to round number two, we're gonna work six increases. So an increase is two single crochets in one stitch. This is the first stitch. You can see the pretty V here. This is the bottom part of it, the top part of it. I'm just going to insert my hook so that I'm underneath both parts of the V. Draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's one single crochet. To make it an increase, we're gonna go in the exact same hole draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and there's two single crochet now in that first stitch. That's one increase. Let's do this all the way around for a total of 12 stitches. There's my second increase, third increase, fourth increase, fifth increase, and sixth increase. At this point, you may wanna use a stitch marker uh, to mark your place. Um, I'm gonna go grab a stitch marker really quick. Here, I've got my stitch marker now. I like to mark the end of my round. So I put this marker into the last stitch I made like that. So there, when we work around, we'll know that's the end of the round when we work in that stitch. Um, be careful about this uh, and stay consistent about putting your stitch marker in the last stitch of your round because I've seen beginners get lost because they move their stitch marker from the last stitch versus the first stitch. So just keep that in mind. Going on to round number three, we're gonna work one single crochet in the first stitch like so followed by an increase in the next stitch. And then you're gonna do that six times all the way around for a total of 18 stitches. So one single crochet, increase. Oh, one single crochet and increase. Another single crochet and increase. Here's my fifth single crochet and increase repeat. And finally, for my sixth one, I'm just gonna take out my stitch marker, single crochet and increase. Perfect, so there is round number three completed. You should have 18 stitches in the round. Go ahead and reinsert your stitch marker. Going on to round number four, we're gonna continue the pattern of increasing. Um, we're gonna do this time two single crochet, one and two, followed by an increase 
and you're going to do that all the way around six times total um, and at the end of this round you should have 24 stitches so one two increase one two increase one two increase one two increase and here is our last repeat taking out my stitch marker one to increase. So there is round four completed. You should have 24 stitches in this round. Um, for beginners, I always recommend counting your stitches at the end of each round just to make sure you're on the right track. It's always frustrating when later you count your stitches and you're like, oh, I'm lost. What am I, what, 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 why do I have like 43 stitches? That's weird. That's a weird number. <laughs> Anyways, going on to round number five, we're continuing the pattern again where we're increasing um, six times around the circle. So this time you're going to work three single crochet. One, two, and three, followed by an increase. Let's do that again. One, two, Re increase one, two, three, increase again, one, two, three, increase. Here's our fifth repeat. One, two, three, and increase. For our last repeat, take out your stitch marker. One, two, three, increase. And that is the end of round number five. You should have 30 stitches in this round. Go ahead and put your stitch marker back in. Uh, if you're ever having difficulty, um, like say you drop your stitch marker and you can't find the end of your round again, here's how you find it. I like to look at round number one and I look for this, um, this here where you see round number two start and where you see it like sit on top. So since I know that's the start, this is how I count my rows. I count looking at the ends. I always look here for round one, end of round two, three, four, and five. So um, hope that helps in learning how to count your stitches um, without a stitch marker, um, just by looking at it when it's done. Going on to round number six, this is our last row of increases. You're going to continue the pattern, this time doing four single crochet. One, two, three, four, followed by an increase. Do this six times all the way around for a total of 36 stitches. So one, two, three, four, increase. One, two, three, four, increase. One, two, three, four, increase. One, two, three, four, and increase. Here's our last repeat. So go ahead and take out your stitch marker. One, two, three, 
two, three, four, and increase. So there is round number six completed. You should have 36 stitches in the round. Go ahead and place your stitch marker back in. For rounds seven through 20, which is 14 rounds because we're including round seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 14 rounds. You're gonna just do one single crochet in each stitch. So each one of these rounds should all have 36 stitches in them because you're not adding or removing any stitches. Um, just continue like this in the round for again, 14 rounds and I'll meet you back here at the end of round number 20. Here is round 20 completed. Um, if you lost track of what round you're on, that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to count it. Um, starting from where your magic ring was, just count that as row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, 20. So that's how you can double check what row you're on. What we're gonna do now is actually um, make our slip knot, um, our loop here big, remove your crochet hook. We're gonna pause to attach our safety eyes and mouth on. Um, I like to keep the like this loop in the back. So this is like the back of your Wada Wada body. So this will be the front. What we're going to do is we're gonna take our eyes and we're going to attach them between rows 10 and 11, leaving five stitches in between. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. You're gonna go right in between these rows, anywhere you want. And then you're gonna count five stitches from that eye. So there's one hole, one, two, three, four, five, and then go in the next one. So the five stitches are in between the two eyes. So there's our eye placement. Go ahead and um, take the backs. I'm just gonna flip this inside out so you can see it more easily. Take the backs and attach them onto the eyes. And now this is where you can use a lighter to melt these ends so that it'll ensure this eye will never come out. What you're gonna do is you're going to melt the tip and then smudge it, squish it into the side of your lighter on the metal part so that it's flattened. So here we go. Just gonna light this bit here. And squish it down. So now with this flattened tip, that back piece is not gonna come out. There we go. Oh, I could light that one a little more. Normally I'm holding this like up to my face. There it goes. Okay. So now you can see I've melted my back posts of the eyes, burned the backs of the eyes, and um, they're secured now. Go ahead and flip it back to the right side. Now we're going to embroider on the mouth, and I'm gonna show you how to embroider on these different mouth shapes. Um, we're gonna start with just the small smile. Um, of course, there are some Wada Wada in the film with like no face, so you don't even have to do this. I think this guy looks so cute as he is. So that's one option is don't put any mouth on it. For the second option with the small smile, take uh, your pink yarn here and I'm just gonna cut myself a length of pink yarn. Go ahead and thread your yarn needle fastest way to thread your yarn needle is to take your needle underneath it, squish it between your two fingers, and then take it, take your needle from the top, squish it in like that. Boom, threaded, threaded needle. To make the small smile, you're going to come up one hole where the smile is beginning. And then you're going to go down two holes after that. So one, two, 
and then don't pull this all the way yet because you're going to go up the whole one row down that's in between them and then you're going to grab this loop to pull it down to make a V and then pull it or push put that back inside and then boom now you've got a small smile um, at this point if this is the mouth you want to make go ahead and just tie a knot here and um, you're all done making your face I'm going to undo this though so I can show you the next face Oops, I split my yarn there. That's okay. All right. To make the big smile, what we're going to do is we're going to essentially make a square, fill it in, and make a triangle on either side and fill those in. That's how we make this big smile shape. Um, since I am using a yarn needle and uh, yarn to make this mouth, it's going to be a lot less precise than if you were, say, using a real needle with like thinner embroidery thread. Then you could actually split the yarn um, instead of having to go into these predetermined stitches. So I'm kind of taking, um, I guess, taking it as a grid, if that makes sense. So I'm going to start with the square in the middle of the big mouth. Go ahead and come up here and we're going to start with like an X, kind of like in cross stitch. Just make one part of the X, come down, make the second part of the X, and then come back up there. And then now I'm just going to make stitches all the way around to box that in. Just like that. This is just regular old back stitches. I'm going to go back into the hole I just came out of. Do that there. Back into that hole. And then up there. And then that completes the square and filling it in. Um, you can also stop here and like think of this as just an O face. What I actually did for this uh, open mouth face, this is actually just two squares filled in. So you do the X on both sides and then do um, treat it as like two boxes and go in between them and around each side of the box. But for that triangle smile now, you're going to come up this side over here and then go just diagonally down there and back up and then over to complete that part of the triangle. And we'll do that on the other side as well. With the big smile, what you'll find is there's some of these white parts sticking through. Um, what you'll wanna do is just get your yarn to come out of this end of the smile and what I do is I just go underneath everything so that looks like that and then go back down the same hole you may have to do this twice and you may even want to uh, make some of your outer the outer parts of your mouth more defined so I'm going in and doing that again I really made this loop too big. I should have pulled that loop maybe a little tighter, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go back in here through the mouth to color color it in, so to speak. And we're gonna come out here and I'm just gonna grab this like loose loop and then go back down. So there is the big smile. Um, how, how I make it at least, you can obviously do embroidery however you want. There's not really a right or wrong answer with that. I might fix that really quick. But there you go. Go ahead and tie off the ends now. And now let's finish up the body. So just because I was being picky off camera, I decided to 
um, make this line on this mouth be one line instead of three little lines like you see here. I don't know if you like how that looks, you might want to do that with your mouth as well. But anyways, we're done with the face now. Go ahead and insert your crochet hook back into your loop. And what we're going to now, uh, what we're going to do now is finish up crocheting the body. So going on to round 21, we're going to do four single crochet. One, two, three, and four, followed by an invisible decrease. Um, I'll show you what an invisible decrease is, but I think it'll make more sense if I also show you what a decrease is. So a decrease is when you turn two stitches into one stitch. Um, typically a decrease is formed by inserting your hook into the first stitch, drawing up a loop, inserting your hook into the second stitch, drawing up a loop, and then yarn over and then pull through three. And there you've turned two stitches into one, hence the decrease. Um, however, since you have drawn up two loops, it can be noticeable because um, it looks different from the single crochets where you only drew up one loop. So to do an invisible decrease, what you're going to do is you're just going to insert your hook in the front loop of your first stitch and then in the front loop of the second stitch, connecting them, and then you draw up a loop and yarn over and pull through two. So it's going to look the exact same as the single crochet on top, just that you pulled up two loops. Um, so that's an invisible decrease. We're going to continue this pattern all the way around. One, two, three, four, decrease, just like that. Insert your hook into the front loops, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do it again. One, two, three, and four single crochet. Here's the invisible decrease. Insert your hook in the front loop and into the next front loop. Draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Do it again. One, two, three, four, invisible decrease. One, two, three, four, invisible decrease. One, whoop, two, three, and four. Remove your stitch marker. This is our last uh, decrease here. And that is the end of round 21. You should have 30 stitches in this round. Going on now to round 22, we're gonna continue the pattern. This time we're gonna do three single crochet followed by an invisible decrease. So one, two, three, decrease. One, two, three, decrease, one, two, three, decrease, one, two, three, decrease, one, two, three, decrease. And finally, last repeat, I'm gonna take out my stitch marker. One, two, three, decrease. And we're gonna put back in our stitch marker. Going on now to round um, 23, you're going to do two single crochet, one, two, followed by a decrease. Do it again, one, two, decrease, and you'll do this all the way around, 
so that you have a total of 18 stitches. Oops, one, two, decrease, one, two, decrease, and one, two, decrease, and finally, last repeat, one, two, decrease, and put your stitch marker back in. That is the end of round 23. You should have 18 stitches in this round. And at this point, our hole is closing up. So we're gonna pause here to stuff. Um, when you're stuffing, just grab small clumps and make sure you're placing them where uh, you want them to. To make sure something is stuffed nicely, just make sure your fingers are really getting in there and feeling where all the stuffing is going just to ensure it has a nice shape. As always, the more stuffing you use, the firmer it will be. The less stuffing you use, um, the more squishy it will be. Um, I kind of like to be somewhere in the middle so that it's like firm enough to hold its shape, but it's still squishy when you go to, uh, well, squish it. <laughs> and you don't have to be like worried about getting all your stuffing done here right now, because after we do, you know, round 24, we can stuff it a little more again when the hole is smaller. And even after the final row, round 25, we can still even add a little more stuffing if necessary. Ooh, that should probably be enough stuffing for me. Make sure that gets all in there. Squishing it around, feeling all the sides. Oh yeah, that's a good squishy boy. Oh, this little wada wada is so cute. Okay, <laughs> going on to round 24 now. Put your hook back into your loop. This time we're gonna do one single crochet followed by an invisible decrease six times around for a total of 12 single crochet. So there's one single crochet. And here's my invisible decrease. Here's my second single crochet. And here's my invisible decrease. Here's my third single crochet. Ooh, squeaky hook. <laughs> it's This is a new crochet hook for me. This is my third four millimeter crochet hook. <laughs> Classic me. Single crochet. And then invisible decrease. Single crochet. And invisible decrease. I find that these um, last couple rows can be tricky for beginners. So, you know, take your time, pause, make this. Um, sl go slowly, take your time, you know, just insert your hook, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through two, just take it one thing at a time. But there it is, that is round 24 completed. You should now have 12 stitches in this round. I am going to just add a teeny bit more stuffing because I felt a low spot over here. And now for the final row, round 25, you're just gonna do six invisible decreases. So this one's, this can be kind of tricky and this is where I'll usually actually change my hook grip from pencil grip to like caveman or um, what do they call this? What's the real term for this? Knife grip? Knife grip, <laughs> caveman grip. But do six invisible decreases, one, Two, three, four, oops, 
five. And here's our last stitch, six. Oh, always the trickiest stitch, but there it is. What I'm gonna do now is give myself a little bit of a tail for sewing. Cut off your yarn, and I just pull this straight out, and this is the yarn end we're gonna close this up with. Um, at this point, I, I can still get my pinky in this hole. I will usually stuff a teeny bit more into my plushies or my amigurumi at this point. Two. How's that feeling? I think I might go for even a little more stuffing. Okay, I'm done stuffing. I actually ended up adding like three more clumps of stuffing and now I am going to sew it shut. Um, after you thread your yarn needle, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the front loop of each of the stitches. So just the front loop like that there, not both of the loops. I just think it looks a little tidier. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Go ahead and pull it so it closes tight. Um, I like to go maybe back around one or two more loops like so. And then this is where I'll tie a knot in the yarn and then send the knot back in. Um, this knot is not going to be able to make its way through all of the loops we just went into, so it is quite secure. And I just send my yarn needle in here, send that yarn through the piece so that it pops, and then just bury your tail. I just use the back of my yarn needle to kind of shove it in there. And we did it. That is the uh, Wada Wada body completed. Oh, look at that. Quite squishy. Oh, such a cute little boy. Okay. These bubble spirits, man. Next, we're going to go on to crocheting the arms and feet. The pattern for the arms and the feet are the exact same, so you're just going to do this four times. I'll only show you once, but go ahead and rewind this video so that you can see it four times if you need to. Taking your white yarn now for arms and feet for round number one, you're going to do four single crochet into the magic ring. I um, already showed you how to do the magic ring at the beginning, so I didn't really go through that just now. But here's one, two, three, and four. And I know sometimes it's tricky when you're making these small little parts. So my best tip for you is if you can make sure your first stitch is like easy to get into, you, you can take your yarn needle here and just preemptively go into the stitch um, before you close the circle then it can make your life a little easier when you close the circle and try to go into that stitch. Going on to round number two, you're gonna work one single crochet followed by an increase. And you're gonna do that twice for a total of six stitches in round number two. And then increase. At this point, I would just take a little pause to turn this inside out like that. Just so round number one is poking its head out like that. Going on to round number three, we're gonna work one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around for a total of six stitches. Um, I find that when parts are really small, I like just prefer counting then using a stitch marker, uh, three, four, five, and six. And you know, if you miscount, it's not a big deal. These little tiny parts don't use a ton of yarn, so you can just chuck it and try it again. Going on now to round number four, we're gonna do two single crochet followed by an increase. So one, two, 
increase and one, two, and increase. Go ahead now and uh, cut off your yarn, leaving a bit of a tail for sewing. Like that, pull this through. With the yarn end that made the magic ring, uh, I would just shove it inside. If it's too much yarn, you can obviously cut it off too, but at least if you stuff a little bit of the magic ring yarn inside, it, it can give the arm a little bit of uh, volume. So go ahead and go and make three more of these uh, so you have a total of four arms and feet. All right, here are my four arms and feet completed. Now we're gonna go ahead and sew them onto our Wada Wada bo body. Go ahead and thread your yarn needle for your first arm. Let's start with the arms. The arms are placed between rows 12 and 15 on either side of the face. So what I do is I just keep an eye on where the eyes and the face are, and then I count down to round 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And I go between 12 and 15. So go underneath here. And I'm just going to uh, insert my hook or insert my yarn needle and through that stitch like so. And when I sew, I like to grab from the inside out of the piece. So I'm gonna grab the first stitch and I always grab both loops. Um, no particular reason why I do that. That's just the way um, I learned. Then we're gonna go diagonally across it doesn't really matter how you do this, um, just as long as you plan out space for eight stitches. Uh, there's eight stitches in our arm, so as long as you go around in roughly eight stitches, you will be just fine. And just keep going around, grabbing each stitch, going going through your work. The first arm I usually am not that picky about. Um, you know, sometimes the arm is more at a 90 degree angle from the front of the face. Sometimes the arm is more at like, I don't know, an 80, a 75 degree angle. <laughs> So wherever you want to place the arm, um, even rounds 12 through 15 is kind of a suggestion. If you want to make your wada wada looks le look like it's raising its hands up, um, like it's partying, then you can do that too. Then sew your arms between rounds, I don't know, 10, 10 and 12. Okay, so there is my first arm all sewn uh, down. I'm going to insert my needle into it one more time and just come out the back somewhere. I'm going to sew on the other arm and when I have the end from this one, I'll use it to tie a knot and then stuff the yarn ends back into the wada wada. So go ahead and do this again for the second arm. Do, do counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I'm gonna be a little more picky on this second arm though, cause I want to make sure it's at least even with my other, my first arm. So, you know, check it from the front. Does it look even here? Check it from the top. I think I put it a little too far forward. That's okay. I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna go one stitch backwards. Do, do. Because, you know, earlier I worked in here. Now I'm actually going to work in here. Alternatively, you may want to use pins, like sewing pins, to uh, help line up your work. Um, I just usually don't, because then I have to go get them. And that's more work. And I'm lazy. <laughs> Okay, 
yes, I am happy with this arm placement. It is symmetric and it is on either side of the eyes there. I guess I didn't really like show you the eight holes I used. I kind of just go in like a circle. So it, it just kind of works out. Keep on going around, grabbing your stitches, stitching it into the body. Here's my last two stitches. Oh, and I also find if you're using a yarn needle, um, I think the metal yarn needles work a lot nicer. Um, you know, these steel ones are not flexible at all. Um, some of them come with bent tips that can be kind of nice to get you into the hole better. But those plastic yarn needles, I, I feel like I've graduated from. I don't, I don't like using them anymore. Okay. I finished attaching on the arm and I made my yarn ends come out the same place. So now I'm just going to tie a knot and bury the tail into the body like so. And here, I won't bury all of it and bore you. I'll cut off most of the tail. Throw that in my stuffing bag to be stuffed in the next Wada Wada. And then bury in just yay much tail. Perfect. Going on to sewing the feet on now. The feet, we kind of want the feet to be um, like, like, uh, like he splooted a little. Like he, he's sitting, just like having fun. The feet are off to the side. I mean, of course, if you want to, you can just put the feet both in the center there, but I like doing it apart. The leg placement you're going to want to aim for is between rounds 19 through 22. You can count from the top or you can just go from the bottom. We ended at round 25, so you know, 25, 24, 23, 22, 219, 21, 20, 19. So go in between this area here. Um, and then as far as lining it up as a guide goes, I'm kind of aiming for like the eyeball, like this foot should be underneath this eyeball and the next foot should be underneath the other eyeball. So I will get this sewn on now. There we go, there's the first leg. Now I'm gonna sew on the second leg, making sure they're both aligned. And there we go. I'm going to send this yarn end through the body to where the other yarn end is. I'm going to tie a knot here as well so that they're all secured. And then tuck in my yarn ends. 
Okay. Ta-da! This is your comp completed Wada Wada. Be cute. Oh, he's squishy. And his feet are little and tiny and small. You may have to squish the bottom a little to get him flat, but then he sits upright pretty well too. Yay! All right, we are all done. Yay! Look at your Wada Wada, it's so cute. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember, you are free to do whatever you like with the items you make, keep, give, or sell them. All I ask is that you credit this design so that uh, folks can find this free tutorial. And if you're able to, please consider supporting me by purchasing a copy of the PDF pattern or purchasing a coffee for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!